a lot of great presentations coming up. We've got a lot of great things going to happen, you know, for the rest of today and into tomorrow. And it's it's such a privilege and honor to be able to introduce the next presenter, the next speaker. For me, it was the second video, and I'm sure a lot of people can relate, was the infamous Flat Earth Clues. And whether you came to it at the beginning, at the early stages, or when it was completed, something about Flat Earth Clues started to kind of bring things in in a way that really wasn't presented in a way like that before. And for me, one of the things was, I don't know if it was Flat Earth Clues 7 or 8, but it was, they're hiding God. And for me, that was a trigger point where I was like, wait a minute, whoa, what if it's that grand? What does it say in Romans? It says that the creation testifies to the true creator. So if there was an adversary, what would be your number one way to destroy the idea of a creator in people's minds? You would attack creation. You would attack the reality of what it truly is. And so I know that like Mark Sargent has been in this for a long time. He's been in the ups and downs. He's persevered. I would go so far as to say that Mark Sargent is one of the hardest workers in Flat Earth. I hear a lot of things about Mark Sargent. But one thing I can say is I don't care who you are, what city you live in, whoever, you know, whatever your belief is. If you want him to mirror something, get the word out promote what you're doing, he will do it. He will wake up early to do it. If it comes to an interview with the media, he will wake up at three in the morning to do it, if it's international media. He will drop what he's doing to promote it. So for all the stuff that's been said about Mark Sargent, the question is, and I always basically say, is how can it be a bad thing when he will promote any one of us? You wanna have a meetup in your city? Get a hold of Mark Sargent. He will get the word out instantly. Before you can actually get off the internet, he's probably got a video up. And it's an amazing thing. But Flatter Clues, let's let, just go back to that for a second, because for me, it was the second video. And seeing that all come together, you know, having more of a conspiratorial mind, seeing kind of dots being connected, the way it was presented, the way it was put together was revolutionary. It really was. And for so many people, it was a profound, pivotal moment that happened. And again, Mark Sargent has done a lot of incredible things. And I'm just grateful. I've got to know Mark over the last couple of years. It's, it's an honor. It's a privilege. And yeah, it, it's going to be amazing. And I just want everyone to welcome Mark Sargent. Thank you. Thank you. Love you, love you. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. This is the Q and A. it is my fault. I, well, no, it's not entirely my fault. But and I, I'm gonna, I have a, I have a short opening statement which I actually wrote uh, in the dining room of my hotel. Uh, and then we're gonna do Q and A. This is interactive. This is a chance with a group this large. I do not have a chance to talk to everybody here, and I am so sorry. I apologize in advance. Normally, the meetups I go to are much, much smaller. Uh, so what we're going to do is there's two microphones, one over there in that aisle, one over there in that aisle. If you have questions, I will you know, feel free to line up and ask them while I'm reading the opening statement. And if you ask a question, just as a little enticement, everyone, will, anyone asks a question will get a signed Illuminati card. Signed by me. From the official Illuminati New World Order deck. So, and just to make it interesting, I have put four Las Vegas cards randomly out there for you. All right, so here's the opening statement by me, which I wrote in my room. <laughs> uh, and I'm, I'm trying not to get emotional here because it's such a great, amazing thing to see everybody. Uh, so many faces, so many faces I recognize, and so many people that have been with me over the last couple of years. It goes a little something like this. I love the Flat Earth community. That's no lie. Uh, all right? I love each and every one of you. I love you, excited person over there. But let me be clear. 
I am not the father of flat earth. All right. All I did was walk up to a door that was already there, point at it and say, hey, I think there's something very interesting on the other side. All right? And all you crazy people, <laughs> you had to poke your head inside and take a look around. Now, here we are, two years later, you've taken this further than I ever, ever would have hoped. For that, I'd like to give you my deepest and most sincere thank you to each and every one of you. I don't care if you're creating content, I don't care if you've got a massive YouTube channel, I don't care if you're doing interviews. If you were here, like Dee Marble said, you're part of the resistance, you're part of the solution. Someone asked me yesterday, and then we'll go straight to comments. Someone asked me yesterday, uh, as this room was being set up, aren't you nervous about seeing all those chairs? I told them, I don't see chairs. I see a flat earth army. One that will shake the foundation of mainstream science. There you go. Welcome. So, microphones, questions, who's, raise your hand if there's, unfortunately the lights are in my eyes, so I will, you got somebody, who's over there? Yes, question. I'm Mike Wood. Um, my question is, you have a background in playing computer games and know some bit about computer programming, right. and I was wondering what your thoughts on if the entire, if the reason the earth appears flat is because we're really just a computer simulation and it right. was just too hard to program in a curve. It was just much easier to program in flat. <laughs> why, you mean why not program a curve into it? No, I'm saying is it's maybe that's the reason it's flat because oh, yeah, it was yeah, too yeah. difficult it's, to program the curve and they took the easy way out and just made it flat. It's way more, you're absolutely right, it's way more efficient to program it uh, flat. And I'm not saying, I'm not going to go out and say it's absolutely a simulation, of course, you know, what is matter, where are we, and that sort of thing. But you're absolutely right. In the development world, 99% of all programmers program it flat. Not because it's clever, but because they're lazy. Exactly. That's really all there is. is like, the programming a curve is hard. You've got to go take into a lot of geometry. So you don't do it. So you always will develop it flat if you can. Yeah, absolutely right. Get your card. Get out of here. All right. <laughs> all right. Over there. Michael. Uh-oh. Is your mic off? While we're fixing that mic, we go back to that mic. Hey, there, Mark. Hey, what's up? Robert Forge. Hey. I know you mentioned that you, you know, you went to a door. What I'm kind of curious about is how did you even think to look at that door? Sheer, call it fate, call it providence, uh, call it. It was for me. Part, part of it was boredom. You know, I looked at a lot of conspiracies. If anyone knows my story, I was a conspiracy guy for years and years and years and thought I had seen it all. And everybody here knows. They've all heard about the Flat Earth. That's the weird part. Everybody here has their top ten conspiracies, and Flat Earth was absolutely not on that list. And then, for whatever reason, everybody's got their own story of how it happened. I just was, you know, recommended to me was just a flight path thing by a guy in, guy in Germany. And I took a look at it. I was going, huh. This, this might have some validity, and I'll, but I'll, truthfully, in the back of my mind, I was going, it's flat earth, it's a piece of crap, I can shut this thing down in a weekend. Uh, that was a big mistake. And then I put out my phone number, which was even worse. And I called you, it was cool. I thought, hey, they know I'm calling them, it's okay, I'm calling them anyway. Yeah, yeah, and I appreciate, by the way, people that call me and just leave messages, or people that call me and hang up and then call again, because they don't know the number is real, thank you for that. So, <laughs> wait, is somebody, and as I did that, as, as I said that, somebody's actually calling my phone right now. <laughs> All right, is 479 area code in Arkansas, are you actually in the room right now? Did you just do that? All right, we'll say, we'll say no. All right, Rick, are you? Yeah, yeah. Mike, Michael Cusack is here from Indiana. Indiana in the house. Well, yeah, it makes a noise. The Hoosier State made it. All right, everybody's excited about that, except everybody. Wait, but who am I talking to? This side or this side? That this side. Michael okay, sorry, go ahead. Hey, I love your stuff. Hey, man. Uh, big fan. Uh, is your real name Wreck It Ralph? <laughs> Wreck It Ralph. And nice. what is your favorite that's ice cream? Good. That's good. I know. I was actually. That's what because of how I look, or because the because of the whole Ralph thing. 
the Ralph thing? Yeah, the Ralph. No, no, my name yeah. is not Ralph. Hey, if uh, Math, if you're Math, whatever your name is, Powerland, if you're here listening, quit. Just delete your account because I mean, you just cost too much. Uh, well, you know what? I'm, I'm glad flyer. you brought that up early, though. And and by the way, it's, the guys reminded me when I got two minutes left because I do want to read. I want to end this with an inspirational email that somebody sent to me just before I came to the conference. But to the the guy's question, just to, to clear this up once and for all, look, I have been accused of being a lot of things since 2015. I mean, literally right out of the bat, March 2015. So real quick, and some of you already heard this list. I've actually made this list. It's called Mark Sargent Was or Has. Uh, I was a deadbeat dad from Boston, caught on video, high-ranking Mason, faked an appendix operation, faked a world pinball championship. I was a drone strike pilot for the United States Air Force, a professional psychological, I'm sorry, psychological operations officer for the CIA, living in Patricia, Patricia Steer's apartment with David Weiss, married to Patricia Steer, had a Croatian child 18 years ago with Patricia Steer, and said child is possibly a Russian spy a full-time NSA data miner and a Hollywood executive working at Warner Brothers, currently living in San Diego, which means I'm in the gay mafia, and I'm a large Jewish woman. So, there's, I, look, if, if somebody wants to say my name is Joe, and I live in California, it's like, oh, wait, who, you didn't give him a card? Oh, Patricia's, wait, wait, who's got the cards? No, no, oh, no, 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 those are, those are the ones we're giving out to people. Wait. Oh, come on. Well, come on. You're... No, no, look. You're... Look, look. Girls, you're both pretty. Come on. Really? So they have to come up to you to get the card? All right. All right, let's do it. Okay, so on this side, if, if you ask a question, you get to literally walk up to the front, probably breaking all sorts of security protocols and pick up the card from Patricia. You, go. <laughs> Hi, Mark. This Hi. is Malav and Shanti. We spoke to you in Georgia at the Flat Earth and Global Debate. Cool. The question I have is uh, what I wanted to ask. How long do you think it will take for this to be taught al taught alongside the Globe Earth? Or better yet, what taught? Steps, That's taught, a tough or question. Yet, what steps need to happen before this is... Crit I, no, I know, oh, where, you're, so I know where your changing. question is. How long? Where, where are we? I would disagree, disagree with some of the speakers so far, which is, look, I think we're, we're almost at the critical mass point, and the media here proves that. There is a whole bunch, and I'm not going to list them off here because I actually don't know all of them. I, there's a whole bunch, though. The media that came here unsolicited on this, this is a big deal, and I, I can't stress this enough to you guys. When you walk into a room like this and your media and you see this many people that aren't dressed in costume like they're going to Comic-Con down in California, you, as a media person, you're taking a step back and you're going, whoa, what in the world? Because everybody's serious. I mean, you guys are all dressed normal. I mean, yeah, there's the guy with the Russian coat and a fur hat over there, but that's fine. That's not actually bad. It's not tinfoil, at least. The, everybody else is, is really cool and they're really serious and everybody knows the 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 stories they know how you know like the slides that are going but it's, that's strange world slides just randomly going up in the background in case you guys didn't like somebody's question you wanted to watch something so anyway with critical mass we're already there i i think it i'm really curious to see after this conference conference ends before the sydney conference comes up and before the london conference conference comes up what science will science is going to have to address this plain and simple there they cannot dodge us forever it's kind of like, I know I'm dating myself, it's kind of like the Clubber Lang, Rocky Balboa from Rocky III. Like, it's like, you can't dodge me. You know, and I shouldn't do those accents. Anyway, sorry, over there. <laughs> got, what do you got? Hey, uh, I'm Ryan McNay from Seaside, Florida, which yeah. uh, interestingly enough is the little town where the Truman Show was filmed. Oh, nice. Um, <laughs> I'm also the only person I know anywhere remotely close to there who's onto this. And so I get to be the guy that's sitting at the bar after work and people come out and go, so tell me about this, um, which is a lot of fun. So I have one very specific question, which um, I've been getting a lot recently and I have not found an answer to, which is, yeah. is there any kind of collective answer or um, input on the Aurora Borealis? How does that uh, kind of play into the, um, um, the I model don't, that we're working with? Uh, yeah, people Yeah, people can chime in all over the place. For me, it's yeah, just- If you have an answer for that, please, I'm the dude in the reggae coat, come and find me in the yeah, hallway. It's, it's like for me, 17 it's just, people on Facebook. Like, are you gonna ask them about the Aurora Borealis? <laughs> it's just, for me, it's just another part of the light show. 
remember, I mean, if it's an enclosed system, and I do believe in an enclosed system, I, you know, I, I, I know that there's, a lot, there's some infinite plane people out there, but I do believe in a dome, a firmament. And I think it's just part of the light show, ever evolving. It's a pretty part of the light show, but I don't focus on it too much. I mean, we had too many problems to worry about with the sun and the moon and to a lesser degree, the stars. So it's, again, it's just, it's something we can simulate in a planetarium now, not very well, but we can do it. So that's it. I mean, I like our explanation better than what science says, that it's part of the solar wind bouncing off the poles, you know, as we're traveling 60,000 miles an hour through space in one direction and half a million another. So, but thank you. Thank that. you. Yep. Oh, yeah, you got to get your card. Because Patricia's making this fun. <laughs> oh, God. I did not know I was going to get Vanna White for this. Go. No. Hey, Mark. It's Mark from New York. How you doing? Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. Nice. Nice. Cool. nice. Thank um, you, by the way, for coming. The guy that actually makes my voice sound bad when you get on and call. Nice. I like your shirt, by the way. Oh, yeah, by the way, yeah, Mark, Mark made this shirt for me. Uh, Flat Earth University, right there, and uh, Sergeant 68 on the back. Yeah. So, what, what, what's up, Mark? Actually, I have a real question. I wanted to ask about, you were explaining once about instancing and looking at the sun, because we were out front talking about right. triangulating. Could you just explain that again? Because it wasn't really... I don't... Well, I, no, it's good. Instancing is a development term, and that is uh, the realization of an object. And I'm not going to bore you with that stuff. It's, it's technical. But I don't necessarily believe that's what the sun is now anymore. Oh. I'm more inclined... In fact, we were just talking about this over lunch, uh, that it's more of a... Uh, uh, kind of like... Remember the Eric Dollard thing where he said the sun is a transformer that's beaming energy from somewhere else? Mm -hmm. That's... Or it could be you know, like when you take a magnifying glass and you make that really, really bright point on the ground before you burn ants or whatever you do with it. Uh, <laughs> if you move that around, I mean, technically, that's a really, really bright point and you can hardly even look at it. It's so bright. But technically, it's not radiating from anything. It was just a focal point. Right. So I almost think that's what it is because if you had a dome-like structure, you could create a focal point just about anywhere. Of course, there's some dead giveaways to that. One would be sun dogs, so which the, Jeffrey Grupp loves to do. So the light source could be somewhere else. Could be somewhere else. I'm not kidding. If you guys have never looked up Eric Dollard, yeah. it's an amazing thing. I mean, it's creepy. I know he's like living in that car when he's doing that interview. <laughs> but he's he's sitting there and he's saying that, the, you know, and, he's, and there's so much conviction in his voice. He's like, no, the sun isn't generating anything. There's no fusion. You know, we don't know. You know, we don't even know what the sun is, you know, but it's it's definitely he was saying that it's kind of like a light bulb. You know, the the, the, the power for it is coming from somewhere else. Okay. So is that it? Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. You don't actually oh, get to go. Oh, yeah. Actually, I was going to ask you, what color is your car? My, <laughs> my, the color of my car officially is cool vanilla. That is the Chrysler designation for it. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> Hey, over here real quick, Mark, uh, one of the guys to look up to is Steve Torrance and Mike Cavanaugh. They did a model, a, a rendering, that kind of shows the pattern of the sun and the circuitry right. so that you can actually see that. And it kind of goes along with what you were saying yeah. about the light not being necessarily projection, yeah. but more of a, uh, I don't even want to say projection because I don't I know mean, that's we're talking is. about tech. Remember, a source, in, a, yeah. in a planetarium, we can duplicate just about everything in the night sky right now. And that planetarium technology has been around since, what, the 70s. You know, back when on weekends they would turn the planetarium into like laser Floyd and laser Led Zeppelin and stuff like that. So the only reason we can't, in fact, we've got the tech now. The only reason you can't do daylight scenes in a planetarium is because we don't have the ability, we don't have the ability to generate that, that many lumens. So whoever's running this place has a lot more tech than we do. Sorry, was there a question on that side? Yeah. I'm very happy, Mark, that there is Bruce Willis standing next to me. Right here. <laughs> very good. Um, no, Mark, I'm... <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, uh, one question. I'm uh, Harold Fulgraber from Germany. Uh, we cool. are here from a science magazine, which is called Galileo. Are you the one I'm um, doing the interview with I'm after this one, thing's yeah. over? Oh, thank Hi, you. Nice I was wondering. You. I didn't know who I was talking to after this. <laughs> no, I have a question. Um, even when we speak about our school system, just that we've been teached, I've been teached about the globe and everything like that. Right. Um, all over the world, not only here in the U.S. Um, can you tell me something about the motivation? Because if somebody wants to tell me a story, it always has to be a motivation for uh, the the big question. The, yeah, I, yeah, I think I know where you're going. What like, is the, what what is in your why, in your eyes? Right? What, why you mean, do why, they tell I mean, why us it was, something? Why it's built or why it's being hidden? Why? 
Why, why being hidden or why was it built in the first place? No, why is it like that, that we grow up with this knowledge oh, oh, oh. all over the world? Be and what is the advance for those people who, in your eyes, who tell us the, not, the, not the truth? I will chime in on this. Uh, when, when it comes to this world, and I know it's not an absolute map, but if this is the world, more or less, then it was created. And if it was created, then you're not alone. Plain and simple. All right. You, you've never been alone. You, your whole life, there's always been someone with you. You can't be the ultimate authority in the world if you're not the ultimate authority. You know what I'm saying? Meaning one of the rules of power is you never admit that there's someone bigger than yourself because that diminishes your authority. If you're the government running something, the last thing you're going to do is say, oh, yeah, those guys could kick our ass all day long. Because all of a sudden, it's true, where all of a sudden you would, um, someone would come to, you know, if you were trying to be oppressive to your people, the people would say, why would I have to listen to you? These guys are way better than you are. And then, you know, it leads to bad things from the government standpoint. So that's why. Uh, so short, short version is they are hiding God. How's that? So you that know? means it's based on really, uh, wait, 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 wait. sorry. Say it, say it one more time. Sorry, that means it's based on religion? Not necessarily based on religion, but definitely based on a spirituality. At the very least, based on spirituality. Yes. I mean, everybody here has felt it. Uh, Ravi had a great quote, and that is, try to be an atheist and be in flat earth. It cannot be done. I have, no, I have yet to find an atheist that believes in any version of this model. Actually, a lot of atheists have come to find him. Oh, absolutely. I Look, yeah. Look, guys, I've... Some, some of you already know this. I fell away from the church for years. And by, I know you got a whole bunch of questions, but we'll talk during the, the, the thing. But I fell away from the church for a long time because I was a big tech guy into science and I love NASA and all the space movies. When I got into this, that turned it all back around. Now, yeah, I had to sort of give up all the science fiction stuff and the space movies and I was kind of sad because I owned a lot of the DVDs. But at the same time, I became, you know, you, you get filled with that inner peace, that, that inner connection that you can't get anywhere else. No worldly thing can give it to you. So, all right. Okay. Sorry. So, Thank oh, you. by the way, did, are, is Prisha over there giving cards out? I Good. Got Perfect. It. Thank you. All right. Vanna, <laughs> yeah, turn the letters. Okay. Over there. Hey, Mark. Uh, Earth Pond here. I hey, Earth Pond. I ask you, uh, <laughs> within the uh, CIA, who actually implanted you within the community? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> but, uh, uh, I did. I, no, I was going to actually ask you if you intended on doing any more clues or are you just going to keep doing the... Uh, Honestly, interviews? right now, look, there hasn't been a demand for the clues since there's so so much other content was generated. Uh, I, I, I honest, Truthfully, if somebody emailed me and said, oh, yeah, Mark, you just do more clues. If I had a whole bunch of emails, yeah, I'd probably do some. But I'm amazed every time. It's hard to even keep up with content now. I almost envy the people that are going into Flat Earth for the first time because there is a wall. I should put down this globe. The, um, there's a wall of content out there that I cannot literally keep up with. I mean, I'm doing Flat Earth and I'm sorting by per hour now. Just what's happened in the last hour. So I'm just going wherever it takes me. I'm on a ride. I am in no control of this whatsoever. I am, I'm glad and humbled that I the clues touched as many people as they did. Uh, and everything else has been unsolicited. The, the interviews, the, the radio stuff, the book stuff, uh, all the people I've met. Uh, if it comes to that, yeah, if I wake up in the middle of the night and say, yeah, clues there, I absolutely will do it. But my God, we've, under, uh, we've uncovered so many stones. I don't know if there's any stones left <laughs> that science can come back on. Look, it's two years. We still can't get a decent debate from mainstream science. So yeah, yeah. anyway, don't want to ramble. Yeah, cheers, man. Uh, you're actually the one who got me to actually consider the flutter. So thanks for that. You're very welcome. Very welcome. You over there somewhere. Hey, Bruce. Oh. Hey, Mark. Bruce. <laughs> yeah, I'm Adam. I'm from Kansas City. Um, hey. Hey. Kansas City. Represent. Got a question for you with all the hubbub, uh, kind of regarding the A model versus the other the other models right. currently. Um, isn't it foolhardy on our behalf to come to a collective, you know, consensus regarding this stuff when if we are criticizing the fact that the space programs are showing us, you know, non-legitimate photos from space right. and we can't show them a legitimate photo, you know, of, of our model. No, we can't. That, that, that just seems a little bit, uh, dangerous, the, that's I guess a, I would say, and, and maybe a turnoff to people that are. 
not like necessarily. To apply the scientific no, method. I know where you're going with this. And, so and, I have one other part. Just <laughs> all right. But go ahead. Go ahead. Oh well, no. Let me let me let me address this. And that is, and actually, the shirt the shirt represents this. And that is, and I, I didn't actually have anything to do with how they made this up. Flat Earth University, right? If Flat Earth is a university, and I'm going to try to lean more towards that in the future, then I my role would be really the freshman recruiter. I bring the kids on campus. That's what I do. And this, the, remember, freshmen are skittish. They don't go to campuses that spook them. And so by that, I mean people come in. But once you get into the university, then you can go off and do anything you want. And they can specialize in stuff. Like if you want to do land experiments, if you want to do air experiments, if you want to do water experiments, if you want to do photography, you want to do songs, uh, you want to do podcasts and radio shows and all that stuff, then you can do it. And as far as alternative models, or you know, advanced models. I call them advanced models. I don't call I don't call them um, alternative models anymore because yeah, there's probably way more advanced things than this. But remember, this has got to be easy to understand for for the average person. You've got to be able to explain it to them and say, okay, this is what we think it is. Now, if there's more advanced thing, yeah, that's like a senior level class, four year, and you can't. For me, it's not my role. It's uh, you know, you will spook the freshman in that case, and it's worked great so far. I mean, look where we are. This is the first time we've had a flat Earth conference literally in 500 years. And would, you, would you agree that the only way to legitimately apply the scientific method right. is to go either explore the Antarctic or the Arctic? I mean, is that not yeah, the only way yeah, eventually, to legitimize yes. this? Because yeah. science, scientism's yep. not going to answer. Our, agreed. Our agreed. Uh, it, right now, the some of the experiments coming down the road, I we will try to address it the best we can. Look, this thing has been. Remember, they had a sixty-year head start trying to lock this thing down, and we've undi un undid most of it in what? Two years, yeah, it's good. So we're we're, right. we're getting there. I mean, we're we're way play on words, way ahead of the curve against them. So, thank you very much. Oh, you're very welcome. Go. Um, I was wondering, how high do you think the dome is? How old are you? Twelve. I can't even tell. How old do you think he is? <laughs> awesome. That's great. Twelve. Yes, sir. Oh, I, I, that that good for you. Excellent. Um, as far as height, whoa, you should go out there and take a look at Chris Pontius' models. Those are pretty cool. Uh, but as far as, for me, I can only go with the data that was released by the government. And by that, I mean the high altitude atomic tests that were done from 58 to 62, the highest of which eh, was roughly 400 kilometers. I don't know, though, because you're also talking about, you know, the firmament versus where the sun and moon are inside it and where the stars are inside it or outside it. It's tough, but it's not, but it's definitely shallow. I know that. And I know people bugs and bugs them when I say, oh, you know, snow globe, right? And people are like, no, no, but people sometimes listen. Cause it, really, if they're not that intelligent at all, that's what it's like, they'll go with the lowest thing. And it's like, oh, snow globe. I totally understand that. But a snow globe's arc is way too high. So it's super shallow by in compared to the width. So it would be, it would look really much like a sports stadium, which is why Chris Pontius' stuff out there, it's still, it's still higher than what I think it is, but it's probably the closest thing we got at the moment. And do you think there's anything beyond the ice wall? More, yeah. Yeah, I think it goes on for a long... Are we talking about just the coastline of Antarctica? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, I do. Because remember, Admiral Byrd, it took him the better part of 30 years just flying around in ever better planes until finally he figured it out. So yeah, the, the white part on this thing would go on for a long, long ways, thousands of miles. So, I mean, we, we, of course, condense everything down because it's easier to, you know, to, to explain to people. But, yeah, I, I do think there's a lot more land out there. Absolutely. The only question is, how far out does it go before you hit the outer marker? And, you know, the, you know where, where is the dome in comparison to it? So, yes, sir. Thank you, by the way. And thank you for coming. I, did you come here with your parents? Did you sneak out of school? How would you get here? I came here with my parents. Right on. Where are your parents? Right over there. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. And that absolutely in about 17 minutes will segue me into my, my letter I was going to read you guys because it's, it's perfect. Perfect segue. Go. Hi, my name is Vivian. I'm from Australia, reporting for the Sydney Morning Herald. Right on, Australia. <laughs> nice. Uh, so our German friend asked about sort of the end game of the people who propagate the theory. My question for you is, who is behind propagating the globalist lie? I know you mentioned the U.S. government. Is it the U.S. government? And is, are other governments in collusion? Yes. Yes, yes, and yes. All those things. All of the above. 
Um, but when it comes to number of people, that's where I take it way, way down. Because as you know, and you guys have all heard the arguments, well, you're talking about every scientist and every pilot and every person ever worked at NASA. And it's like, no, no, no. Yeah, if it was a normal conspiracy, yeah, you would have to get a lot more people involved. But since this thing is so big, less is more. Meaning you only, at NASA, the only people you'd need would be the telemetry guys and maybe the high brass. When it comes to the governments, you don't need to tell presidents and princes necessarily. I mean, they're, they're not high enough on the food chain. So we're talking about a very, very small group of people. And no, I don't necessarily want to get into like naming. It's like, you know, is it the Illuminati or the Bilderbergs or the Trilateral Commission or the Vatican or just go on and on. But it is a small, scary group of smoking men sitting around a long table. And I guess a follow up to that question would be uh, if the end game is godlessness, would there be some sort of satanic element bringing those governments together? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, and, while, and while you're walking away, let me, let me answer that with one more thing. In the absence of good, there is evil. Thank you. All right. Anyway, thank you very much. And, and hopefully I'll talk to you later. Uh, yes. Hello, my name is Robert Ross. I'm a computer programmer, web developer, photographer, and music producer. Nice. And I was wondering, uh, people like Elon Musk who fund the SpaceX program, uh, when they yeah, when they reach, if they actually do produce a uh, rocket capable of reaching uh, the dome, so to speak. Keep in mind, I'm new to the flat Earth theorem. I'm a bit of a noob. I don't know if this is a noobish question, but are they going to uh, strike it and immediately explode, or will they just hug the edge? Just okay, sort of officially, Elon Musk is not. Anything that man says is an outright lie. I just want to say that. Anybody covering this, Elon Musk just pulls crap out of his butt on a weekly basis. That his headlines are the most ridiculous, outrageous things. Even for, I'm a sci fi lover, and I hate everything Elon Musk ever said. Uh, you may remember, he's still saying that, oh, yeah, well, I'm going to take two tourists around the moon in split six months from now. Right? With what capsule? With what booster? With what? Who are the pilots? You haven't even named the guy, the tourists that are going to be there. He just makes up and says, "Oh yeah, we're going to colonize Mars." And every time he does this, the press just latches on. Hey, he's great. He's a visionary. It's ridiculous. So as far as what he's doing, his projects. Oh yeah, by the way, he supposedly is sending stuff. Virgin Galactic's not doing anything, but SpaceX is supposedly doing the capsules to to the the ISS. You know, doing re resupply. And yet we never see any photography of it docking. You know, all you know is like, oh, they're taking off. And then three hours or four hours later, it's like, oh, we're now entering the ISS in our khakis and our polo shirts and our socks. <laughs> it doesn't, it's like, what's with the no shoes? I, anyway, so when it comes to him saying that he's going to launch stuff and, and curve over, no. Even he probably doesn't know exactly because they want him to act naturally. I, as much as I hate Neil deGrasse Tyson, I don't. I still don't know if he's fully disclosed on everything that's going on because he. Remember, it's better if the person's acting naturally. He's got a smile on stage. I don't want to get Neil deGrasse Tyson. Sorry, I could ramble on forever. Thank you, though. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Hi, uh, Cy from Washington State. Um, hey, Washington State, represent. You're good. Well, then no one cheered like that for Indiana. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, first of all, I'd like to give credit to the King of Truth, Jesus Christ, for us all being here. Uh, second of all, just a quick statement, just for you guys, the leaders. There, there is a push to look into the Aurora Borealis and the possibility of it being the original Garden of Eden. I'll let y'all take a look at that. Whatever. Cool. My second. Uh, Part of this is what do you think of Eric Dubay and his divisiveness uh, with you and who uh, was the leader of this movement? Not that that's important, but also his fact that, uh, or his point of trying to eliminate Jesus from the entire equation. Gotcha. All right. Uh, when it comes to Eric, and you guys know probably my stance, I, I'll, I'll give a kind of a conference stance first. First, he was absolutely invited to this thing. From day one, he yes. was like, hey, Eric, can you go? He politely decli declined, and then he put us under the bus during an Eddie Bravo interview. If you haven't seen it, you probably should. It's kind of cringeworthy. Uh, as far as he and the differences between he and I, I held out the olive branch for him for the better part of two years. And I was, I was like, look, you know, you still chance. Come back. You know, you, you, you've got 100, 100, what, six figures plus subscribers you can still do some good here and a lot of people watch his videos they get a lot of hit counts but when he threw us under the bus 
there was nothing else I could do. I mean, literally, he called the conference a shill fest. And I was like, come on, man. It's like, and he wouldn't endorse anybody. So that was it. That was, that was all I could do. I, I mean, I, I was way more patient than most when it comes to that. I, I still don't hate the guy. But there's nothing, if he's not willing to come halfway, nothing I can do. Sorry. But thank you. Yes. Hey, Mark. It's Candy from North Carolina. Uh, <laughs> hi, Candy. So you guys that watch Strange World will get this. I'm I just sorry, need to know if you have started planning that wedding. Planning your our wedding between you and I? Okay. <laughs> First off, two two words, restraining order. All right. <laughs> Second, I love you to death, Candy. I really, really do. Uh, you have been a fan. I mean, one, you're wearing one of the Flat Earth University shirts right now. You've been one of my biggest cheerleaders, and I adore you for every time you go into a chat room and just keep typing my name. Hey, look at Mark Sargent. Look at look at Mark Sargent. And <laughs> and thank you. And thank you for everything you, you've done so far. And as far as our wedding goes, well, don't know. I still love you. <laughs> but thank you. All right. Mark, it's Joshua Reeder, and um, I'm a business guy, an entrepreneur. And I have certain uh, visionary insights into some markets and some verticals. And this is a very new and fresh one and interesting one. And so I always see a lot of people that have different talents to bring to the marketplace, per se. And I feel like there's tons and tons of uh, uh, very smart and creative uh, people that are probably looking at a lot of videos right. and seeing people produce maybe some, uh, some content of some sort. My question is, what do you see the need for in the market as far as some people that could step out in a new creative oh, way, so, even in the realms of, let's just say, I don't know, an app, an iPhone app or a website or something, some exploratory type thing that needs to be happening. What could other people rise up and kind of help with the collective here? Because uh, I think there's more people that want to get involved. Oh, no, no, I got you. It's whatever you're comfortable with. I mean, as far as how it's grown, it, it's everything has seemed very, very natural meaning all the different stages of uh, different aspects of Flat Earth, the vi different video types, the different backgrounds of people coming into it, everybody's been doing what they specialize in. That's what I, one of the reasons I, I love Flat Earth is that it inspires people at their core. So whatever you're good in, Flat Earth just seems to amplify that. As far as what we need, what we have a gap in right now, probably more ex uh, the obvious things, more experimentation, more pinning down of scientists, anybody with a master's degree, in a, um, and a physical science, you know, geology, hydrology, biology, astrophysics, astronomy, any of those would be really, really great. I know that most academics won't touch it with a 10 foot pole because you don't want to be the guy that loses to flat earth. You don't want to be right. that guy. Right. Uh, it's in a boxing match. It literally, and you guys have heard me say this. If, if you go in, if you're an academic and you go into a flat earth boxing match, you've got to win in the first round really, really quickly. If you don't, then you're losing. And you don't want to, be, if it's a draw, you've lost. If you go to the third round, you've lost. So those are the things we're missing right now. More experimentation, and I know we're, we're working on that. And there's some things coming out of the pipe. I'm not going to do spoilers, but there's some really, really cool things coming. And more debates. What I'd really love, honestly, and part of this is going to come down to the media that's covering this now, would be the media organizing. It's like, I, I don't, I, honestly, it would be embarrassing to put Bill Nye in a room with somebody because he's just terrible. But somebody, somebody from the academic field, give yeah. me some astrophysicist that published something because Neil won't do it. That's what we really need right now is, is heavy debate and more experimentation. That's what we're missing at the moment. We've got tons of other content right now. I mean, okay. literally there are, if you look it up, uh, what Robbie had me do, literally there's like a million, literally a million videos, not just hit results, a million videos with the word flat earth in them right now. Right. That's an amazing amount. And media take notice of that. Yep. Anyway. Agreed. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, Mark. Uh, I'm Jay Kennedy. I'm a pastor from South Carolina. Oh, and, thank uh, you. Yeah. So, so obviously this conference for us is not about convincing us. You know, we've watched all the videos, so these are the people who are willing to invest money in something they're already convinced about. I mean, we can maybe learn some, you know, a few more proofs here and there. But what I've heard so far this morning is, you know, Jaron said to do your own experimentation, you know, do your own research. Right. Uh, we've heard to say that, you know, 
the people in this room, or the, the, the folks who have been convinced, we're the kind of the, you know, the next step here uh, in this movement. And so my question, um, or maybe a request to all the content producers in, in the room today, is that, you know, being a pastor, I'm kind of all about figuring out how to spread the message, you right. know? Uh, so uh, the question is, how do we, what's the next step for us in spreading the message? For... Um, well, I'm thinking in terms of tools that the content producers can give us to put in our hands that are very accessible, that we can use to then spread the message very common sense way to people in, in helping to convince them rather than, you know, sending them to three, two hour YouTube videos uh, where honestly in those videos, there are going to be some 50, 50 proofs, you know, that will work on either model. Right. And so for someone who's a skeptic, those 50, 50 proofs aren't going to really do the trick. And then there are some higher level scientific things like, you know, Michelson Morley that aren't that accessible to folks, but I'm looking for the middle ground maybe where if you can give us, you know, these five things that we can do to reproduce an experiment yeah, to take I, someone through to, you know, to really be very compelling and simple and accessible. I know you're, you're talking about the magic bullet and <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, it's a nice thought and everybody's, everybody's gone through this. It's like, I have the magic bullet. I'm going to tell my family about flat earth during Thanksgiving. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> That goes over really, really well. Yeah. There is no magic bullet because it comes down to your audience. If, yeah. it were, if we're talking about a chapter and verse type thing, you've heard me say it. I recommend uh, testingtheglobe.com or books by Zen Garcia. Uh, there's a lot of material out there. As far as, I mean, you just got to size up your audience. There is no one hook. Everybody's got their little, I mean, I've got my trap question regarding the Van Allen belts, and that goes pretty well. Uh, Rob Skiba, I know, you know, uses, you know, how can you prove the globe without using NASA. You know, there's short things, but it come, I mean, really it's an individual, which is why I do the Fight Club reference. You have to size, size up your opponent. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if you have to come at, if they're not, again, real short, uh, if they're not into conspiracies, you got to come at them sideways. Mm -hmm. And most of all, and I can't stress this enough to anyone out there, don't lump in other conspiracies in your argument because Flat Earth puts them on their heels so quickly they don't know how to recover. Every, just about every interview I've done, and I've been really careful about it, I don't let them bring up Sandy Hook or Boston bombing or 9-11 or every major war the Americans have ever fought, you know, going on and on and on. There's, there's, there's nothing – you don't want to do that because then they'll latch onto that because they know. You know they, they, they're more – it's like, oh, you know, then they'll, they'll sidetrack you. I always you know, stick with Flat Earth. That's the big one because it is so disarming – well, that and it's polarizing and that it makes people really, really irritated. That, uh, the, But you have to gauge the level of irrit irritation and just pick. I mean, there's – honestly, I don't have – if I knew which you, what you're talking about, the playlist yeah. or the magic bullet, I would have a playlist of only five. The yeah. one I recommend to most people now, uh, which it's, um, it's on my YouTube channel. It's just In fact, you don't even have to go to my channel. Just type in Flat Earth Shortlist. It's literally the flatter shortlist for new people. It's a collection of all sorts of people, most of the lead from the presenters here. Uh, but there's some uh, from other people that aren't presenters here. It's really good to go off. Of. Anyway, sorry. Uh, probably have time for two more, and then I will read this email, and then we'll go. What? I want to thank you for coming to Los Angeles. Oh, that was a wonderful you're thing. Pas you're from the Pasadena native. Thank you. I'm Angel Shackleton with FlatEmpire.com. Kendall. Got a question for you. Yes. You've said many times about you've done unsolicited. You've put out your, your phone number so they easily reached. You can be taken seriously and that you didn't monetize anything until you were asked to. Right. And now you have your book and yep. all these interviews. When you cash in, which you said <laughs> you will cash in when you get a deal from filmmakers, from TV well, makers, I mean, what deal would you turn down when you cash as long in? As what it covers, makes it for you? I, I know, I got you. As long as it covers Flat Earth, I'm doing it. But if somebody came to me and said, hey, we want you to do some television thing, but we want you to do sort of like an ancient aliens hybrid sort of thing, I'd be like, no. No, Flat Earth is what I do now. This is, this is what I do every day. I'm Flat Earth 24-7. So as long as that integrity, that part of it's the core stays solid, uh, I will, you know, entertain anything. And there's been things down the pipe, but I, as far as cashing in, look, as, as long as it's a flat earth journey, I'm taking it. If it's not flat earth, I'm not doing it. Flat earth Baywatch. Flat earth. <laughs> nice. 
All right, we have we have time for I think two more. What over there? Uh, this is Lathania from California, aka Pittsburgh, California. Is that Pittsburgh, California? Yes, sir, I'm in the house. Uh, there is a, such a thing, by the way. I have a, uh, one question and a comment. Have you heard anything recent on the supposed uh, moon uh, video, the the, uh, the moon race that they're supposed to be doing? Uh, you mean the Google X Prize? Yeah, have you heard anything? Oh, yeah, yeah. That can, that can was kicked down the road almost immediately. I knew it was going to happen. Mm -hmm. If you guys hadn't heard about the Google X Prize, Google was going to pay $20 million to the first company that landed a probe on the moon and return images back, right? And there were five countries that were going to be involved, the United States, uh, India, Japan, uh, Israel, and I can't remember the fifth one. Oh, Europeans. And they, they, but you had to launch by December 31st of this year. We were talking, what, six weeks from now? Right. And they kicked it. It's like, oh, no, we're, we're going to postpone the launch date until April. Nobody's, nobody's even talking about this. But before April, they'll kick it down again. And don't forget the Orion program. Um, all right, just, last I, question. I, I just had one comment. Uh, just my comment. I just wanted to tell you personally, thank you and all the content providers for that that you have doing, uh, beating a steady drum. And uh, for scripture, tell us, you know, let's come to the table and just reason with one another. And that's what we're doing. And Thank you. when Thank we you. come together like this, big things can happen as we see. Here we go. So let's keep cool. it keep flat. Right. Hey, hey, you got time for a couple more? Or just I, one? No, I, one I, more? I, I've got to read this. We don't have time because I don't want to run over. Right. Sorry. Just stock market. Oh, yeah. Well, by the way, anybody that's still in line or that wants a card, how many cards you got left on your side? 15 or 20. Anybody that wants a uh, Illuminati card, see that man over there. Anyone that wants a Illuminati card, stay in line and see that man over there, and you'll get him, even though you didn't ask a question. You're getting him. And yell out if you get the Vegas one. All right, I'm going to end this with it. You guys want to know what inspires me from time to time? I get emails. I love emails. I love phone calls, and they're getting mobbed. Oh, my God. Okay, so I'm going to read this. All right, so this one came in just before I came to the conference. Mark, my wife and I went to visit our grandkids this week to hang out with them at the lake and go swimming at the hotel pool. They are 12, 10, and 8 years old and are all third-generation flat earthers. You convinced me nearly two years ago. I passed it on to my kids, all five adult kids, and together we passed it on to their kids, my grandchildren. So I asked the two older ones, the sixth and seventh graders, if the flat earth ever comes up in school. The same thing happened in each of their classes. They were both so excited to tell me that when their science teacher was telling the kids the earth spins at a thousand miles an hour and goes around the sun, that the class erupted with about a third of the class saying, no, it doesn't. <laughs> the earth is not spinning and it does not go around the sun and it's not a ball, it's flat. They had a big debate, and the teacher let them talk it over. But the same thing happened in both their classes in both grades at the, I'm going to name it, the Frazee Elementary and the Frazee High School in Frazee, Minnesota. That's F-R-A-Z-E-E, -E, Minnesota. My son and his wife are both 31. They tell me that a lot of the young parents in their community are also awake and are hip to the earth being flat. They are all encouraging their kids to speak up about it too. Long live flat earth. That's it. Thank you, guys. And I... Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> anyway, thank you. Um, is somebody coming up to... Rick's on his way. Rick's on his way. Thank you, guys.